If you have lot of film to digitize, using a transmissive scanner it might be not a great idea. In this video I'll show you an alternative solution that takes only a fraction of time, and delivers great quality as well. Let's start. As I said, I have lots of films. Like 150 plus rolls. I also have a great scanner, an old Epson V750, that can do 6400 dots per inch. As a side note, make sure that the material you digitize is as clean as can be. It will save you lots of post-production work. Don't worry if few specks of dust show up. It will always happen. For driving the scanner I'm using Hanrix Vu Scan Pro. Preview scan time can be pretty fast, no problem here. Wink, wink. But when you scan at maximum resolution, with multiple passes in order to digitize a dense negative, all hell breaks loose. You. Could. Get. Bored. To. Death. You. Could. Get. Bored. To. Death. You could get bored to death. Why? You ask why I wear gloves? Well, when the grease from your fingers gets onto film gelatine, nasty things start to happen. Nasty things that, in time, will damage your precious negatives. Back to my problem, how do I drastically reduce scanning time? I know. Let's make a photo of that negative frame. At least I'll put to a good use my fancy cell phone. Wink, wink. As it turns out, my window light doesn't work too well. I need a better light. A cheap LED panel should work. But the phone? Not so much. Its tiny sensor is not intended to be used in this way. I remember I have an old enlarger. Its base stand column should be of help. Again, remember to clean as much dust as you can, before you digitize the negative. You need a way to mount the camera onto the enlarger. In my case I had to order this adapter. Also, we need to direct the light only through the film frame, because otherwise we'll have unwanted flares that lowers the quality of our digitized image. So, I ordered a magnetic film holder. Until it arrived, I made this contraption from cardboard. And no, it doesn't work too well. Don't worry, I'm quite well. Just waiting for the frame to arrive. Wink, wink. That was fast. This is the magnetic film holder from Lomography. It's called Digitalizer. I'll leave a link in the description, where you can order it online. First things first. I do read the manual. 
Well, you can hardly call it a manual, but still. I'm very, very pleased of how well the holder holds the film strip. And it only uses one millimeter or so, leaving almost all the frame exposed, including the sprockets. Now, back to the camera. Using a regular lens is no good as it cannot focus close enough to capture the tiny film frame. We definitely need a macro lens with 1 to 1 ratio. Feel free to use anything similar, reversed lenses, bellows or spacing rings, but a dedicated macro lens is the best solution. Make sure any optical stabilization, both in lens and in camera, is turned off. Also, set the focus on manual, as we need to focus on film grain. Once set, the focus will not be changed for the entire digitization session. Ouch. Remember to shield any light that leaks near film holder. I know that I'm doing a lousy job here, but I promise I will improve. Click. As quality is comparable, the time is not. Scanning a roll of film takes me at least two hours. Photographing the same roll is done in less than 15 minutes, including taking off and putting back the film strips in the protective sleeves. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. I will try to respond them in a timely fashion. Check the description for links and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Wink, wink.